Um, but one of the big things has to do with what we see coming on with cyber and cyber crime, cyber threats, cyber attacks, cyber uh, security, um, and all that type of stuff. And so when the CBDC comes about, obviously, they're going to need to do some protection, um, some transition to locking down all things cyber and network in order to make it happen. And it doesn't stop there when it comes to CBDC. Um, but coming up in September 10th through 11th is the return of Cyber Polygon. Hey guys, Cyber Polygon's back. Wow. Cyber Polygon's coming back September 10th through 11th in 2024. The international online train uh, is an international online training for raising global cyber resilience. Assemble a team, uh, assess your threat investigation skills and practice incident response scenarios. Now, this is something that uh, we've reported on Back in, you know, 2020, 2021, when this thing first happened, um, about the same time of all the stuff uh, with 2020 when it comes to the medical thing and how everything switched to digital at that point. It's amazing how they just happened to have a cyber uh, threat program event happening at the same time as all that. It's almost like they knew what was going to happen, right? Almost. Um, but basically, Cyber Polygon is back and it will be conducted virtually on the buy zone. Um, by zone infrastructure, networking infrastructure, which if you guys don't know by zone, uh, it's a subsidiary of Sabre Bank, which is Russian. Uh, it's important to remember that Cyber Polygon was an event that was uh, created by both uh, Russia as well as the WEF. But I thought they were enemies. Hmm. Interesting. So it will be conducted virtually on uh, the Bizone network, but the Cyber Polygon booth or their, their event booth will be set up and operating at the same time at the MENA Information Security Conference in, guess where? Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Imagine that. Unlike previous events, the WEF doesn't have any front page recognition of involvement. So this is the first time that we're not seeing them publicly involved. We know that they're working behind the scenes on this, but they're not. They're choosing not to be publicly involved, especially since we know the WEF took their public stance against Russia after the Ukraine stuff, so it would make sense that they're not front-page news on this. Um, they were mentioned in the initial announcement back in April, but has since been removed. So this was uh, announced in April, and they were removed, um, obviously, for public, uh, public stance, public idea. Now... There was a Cyber Polygon event that was postponed back on July 8th of 2022. So there was supposed to be one July 8th of 2022. At the same time, if you guys don't remember, at the same time, July 8th, 2022, when this was canceled, the Canadian telecoms giant Rogers was taken offline, interrupting banking, transportation, internet, website hosting, and government services. So the same day that Cyber Polygon was to take uh, effect but was postponed is the same day <laughs> that this happened. Fascinating. Quinky dink? I don't believe in quinky dinks. The April announcement said that the focus was to be on cyber attacks. This is uh, jumping to this April, the initial announcement. Said that the focus was to be on cyber attacks, uh, on infrastructure and data leaks, while it has since been updated to now, it's going to be about cyber attacks on tech companies. Uh, Riyadh, uh, Riyadh just hosted the latest WEF uh, meeting in April. It's amazing how it's all the same time of this stuff. And now we'll welcome the Russian-based cyber event to take place there as well. You notice how Saudi Arabia is becoming a central hub for both East and West? They're working with both, both East and West. I think it's fascinating, personally. Now, Russia has been a leader on global cyber infrastructure for a very long time. They've been leading the charge on global in, uh, cyber infrastructure. They've been one of the head people when it comes to it. They headed up the WEF's uh, uh, Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network. That was back in October 21, uh, 2021, which included the establishment and the construction of digital economies 
the Internet of Things globally, as well as policy to keep everything on track. Russia was also partnering with the WEF uh, on the creation of Cyber Polygon. They were the two that started it. Russia has also been one of the leaders when it comes to financial in investments, when it comes to global central bank digital currency research. It's fascinating how the news tells us Russia is against all of this stuff, but yet they've been one of the leaders in developing it. Hmm, it's almost like there's some propaganda thing going on with the media when it comes to that. Maybe we shouldn't believe what they say. I don't know. Just a thought. As well as Russia <laughs> was the one who drafted the UN Cybercrime Treaty, which was approved back in May of 2021. Now, the draft was approved. They've got the final vote coming up on August 9th of this year. How many of you have heard of the UN Cybercrime Treaty? Just curious. I mean, we're aware of things like the pandemic treaty and stuff like that. But did you guys know that the UN was working on a global cybercrime treaty as well? Hmm. So this treaty was drafted by Russia and is headed by the UN Ad Hoc Committee, which is their drugs and crime division, because they have a division for everything over there. And this is a, propo a proposal that is set to open up privacy and freedom violations for cybersecurity global. So this is the pandemic treaty for cyber surveillance. That's what this is. And the vote is coming up April, uh, August 9th. This is to cut through state and personal sovereignty, all in the name of stopping cyber terrorism and cyber crime. Everything is moving to digital, so obviously they're going to need something like this. Similar to how the pandemic treaty is to stop pandemics. The finalization of this treaty is set for August 9th, of course. As I said, I want to make sure everybody's aware of that date because the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, or the Ad Hoc Committee, uh, will be coming together the July 29th to August 9th, and there's going to be a vote on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we're not going to dive through the whole thing because there's a lot. But some of the stuff that I found, the conditions in the UN article, specifically Article 24, sound good on the surface. They usually do in some type of way. Oh, yeah, that's good. I'm going to agree with that until you realize who's putting it out. Then you go, okay, maybe there's something more to this, which there is. Article 24, sound good on condition, uh, sound good on the surface, whereas it uh, it motive or it mo <laughs> can't read my own handwriting. What did I write? I have absolutely no idea. I'll just make it up. Whereas it motions to remove domestic law protections, personal privacy, and judicial reviews. But then when you stack it alongside the Constitution, it basically abridges the Constitution in order to violate all those rules. Kind of like how the Patriot Act was to do the same thing. Well, this is basically what's going on with this. So things like the Patriot Act, FISA 702, as well as the international health regulations are all built to overstep, to shred through, to cut through, to abridge our personal freedom and sovereignty that's given in the Constitution. Now, ultimately... We don't, as, you know, people who follow both scripture and the law of the land, because the Bible says submit to authority, which is the Constitution, which we are the government, so we submit to our own authority, which is in the Constitution. So anything that violates the Constitution, we have no Christian responsibility to adhere to, so we shouldn't have to adhere to this stuff. But the problem is is they're implementing it on such a wide scale level globally, as well as they've got every government uh, system in their, in their pockets to adhere to this thing that destroys the constitution. We have no way of fighting back against it. So we just have to roll with it, which should not surprise us, should not surprise us because the Bible says this B system is going to happen. It's coming. It's going to be here. And so we can't fight against it. I know that's something people don't like hearing, but that's what the Bible says. Sorry. 
don't shoot the messenger. But this is just, it's, this stuff is going to happen. And they've built a way of making it so us puny little peasants can't do anything about it. Um, but that's fine. Why is that fine? My God's bigger. My God's bigger. So what do I care? My God's bigger. Now, also within the article is that prior authorization before the surveillance, the cyber surveillance, and action is not required. So ultimately what this means is they do not need to receive authorization, do judicial authorization to do the surveillance. They can just do it. And then they can take action on it without prior authorization either, which means you are now guilty until proven innocent. The opposite of what it's supposed to be, where it's innocent until proven guilty, which we understand that's been thrown out the window for a very long time as well. But ultimately, that's what's going on with that. I pressed a button, didn't do anything. Okay, good. <laughs> now, there also within it is there's no transparency requirement, meaning there's no uh, requirement for public knowledge of who, what, how, and why of the tools being used to surveil us. So kind of like Visa 702 and Patriot Act and stuff, they don't have to tell us how they're watching us. They just do it. Well, it's the same thing for this as well, globally. So whatever system that they want to put in place, they don't have to tell you ahead of time. They don't have to tell you what they're doing, who they're looking at, what they're looking at, why they're looking at it, and what tools they're using. They don't have to tell you anything. They'll just do it. And then they can take action on it without judicial uh, prior judicial authorization. And they can just do whatever they want to do. While all this already occurs globally as it is, this is a new one world document that's coming into place ultimately. Uh, basically securing a single art, uh, article on cyber surveillance. This is basically the pandemic treaty for cyber surveillance. And the fact is, is many people didn't know that this was coming. I didn't know about it until a couple of weeks ago. So I had no idea. And guess who drafted the main thing? That's right, Russia. But I thought Russia wasn't a part of all this. I thought they were against everything that the WEF was doing. Oh my, fascinating. <laughs>